Hi and welcome. I'm Taryn. Thank you for joining me for this body image workshop, which is the last workshop in our Body Conscious series. First of all, I want to thank you for sharing yourself and your energy with me and for opening your mind and being curious around um, what it is I have to share and becoming more curious around yourself and your own body and being present in your body and what it's like to be in your body. Uh, so, so thank you. I really appreciate uh, having had this time to connect and share with you. Uh, so this workshop is going to be more of a talking workshop and concept and ideas and a bit of self-reflection, self-inquiry. Uh, so when I think of body image, there's, there's two things that really come up for me is how we imagine our body to be and then also how we relate to and um, connect with or sense what our body is. And so the first point I'll talk to is how do we imagine our body to be? And most of the time when we talk about body image, I think the first thing that comes up is aesthetically, what do we appear like and what do we look like and what do we imagine others think that we look like uh, so more appearance based. But alongside that is how do we imagine our body to be in terms of its capability and its resilience and its strength and its, if we go on the opposite spectrum, its brokenness and its uh, inability and um, the, 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 you know, seeing transition and change as something that's not natural and that's not normal and it's something to fight against. Um, so when we talk about body image, it's how you imagine yourself to, to look aesthetically, but then also how you imagine your body to be um, in its function and its resilience and its capability. And then that will lead me too, to more so to what do we imagine our body and how do we sense and connect with our body? And what's the purpose of our body and what's the relationship that we have with our body? But I first want to talk to the aesthetic component um, and how prominent it is that we as women just never feel quite beautiful enough, thin enough, tall enough, whatever it might be, enough of. Um, and how we sense and see ourselves is often very different to what another person might perceive and think about us. And so I've shared with you in the email this link to the Delph, uh, I'm going to call it a, it's a, it's not a commercial, it's a, um, it's a practice where they take um, two people and, and one looks at, at the other person and then they um, talk to an artist and tell them how to draw this person and what they would look like. And then the person themselves does the same, talks to an artist and tells them how to draw them and how they imagine themselves to look like. And then it's a beautiful uh, comparison of what somebody else imagines or perceives you to look like and how you imagine yourself to look like and how they can be quite different and worlds apart. Um, but less important than what somebody else, how somebody else sees us. It, it is all about how we see ourselves. Um, and another beautiful example that comes up for me quite often is when I ask women, have you ever had a time where you look at a photo of yourself, say five years ago, and what you are able to see now is so different to what you were, were um, perceiving yourself to look like and be like back then? And the answer is often yes, like they look, we look back and we say, gee, I wasn't as fat as I used to think I was, or my skin wasn't as bad as I used to think it was, or, you know, my, my frizzy hair that I thought was horrible was actually really cool and cute, and 
whatever it might be, often with a more, a, a sort of separation, um, we are able to see more clearly ourselves for what we actually appear like and look like. And I think it's often because we don't have that inner critic um, who's criticising us then. They'll be busy criticising us who we are now. On the flip side of that, for women who've often made it to their ultimate, you know, looking body and appearance and that sort of thing, what they can often reflect upon by looking at a photo, say, a few years ago when they were doing all the things to look a particular way, they can say, I felt depleted, I felt exhausted, I was investing so much time and energy to look a particular way. And ultimately, yes, I looked like that, but it didn't gift me and bring me what I thought it was going to. And what we often think that looking a particular way will give us is uh, joy and happiness, satisfaction, maybe an easier lifestyle. So we attach whatever meaning we have attached to looking a particular way and what it will give us. But ultimately, what we're trying to do by looking different and being different or trying to fix how we look because we think that there's something wrong with how we look, we're actually trying to access a feeling. So rather than we're trying to chase a look or an appearance, what we are trying to access is a feeling. And I really want to talk to this about finding the feeling. So finding the feeling is asking yourself, like how is it you would like to feel in your body? So for example, I would like to feel connected with my body. I would like to feel strong and capable in my body. I would like to feel uh, healthy and well in my body. And I would also like to feel comfortable in my body and whole in my body. And so that really has nothing to do with what I look like. It's all about an inner landscape and how I want to feel. When I connect to, or when you connect to how you want to feel, it's then about finding ways to access that feeling right now and so often um, in my sessions with women um, they might walk in and they feel like I'm, I'm overwhelmed I'm exhausted um, I feel really disconnected from this space in my body um, whatever it might be and it really is as simple as let's sit down together let's um, get some grounding let's we come into our centre, we breathe into ourselves and we feel the present moment in our body, we become more grounded and in our body and then we can start to explore and connect with our body and be in communication with our body and it's in that moment that we access the pleasure, the joy, the ease, the calm. So we actually don't need to change anything or fix anything or do, do anything to be different other than to stop and be present in the moment. And that practice is, you know, it's a continual practice and that's the other thing about positive body image is that it is a practice. It's not like one day we wake up and we all of a sudden you know, feel like, oh, I'm so beautiful from the inside out and I can see my beauty and I can sense my beauty and it doesn't ever, uh, the inner critic doesn't ever show up and say, hey, Taryn, your ass is looking a bit big or um, you probably should get a few more runs in this week or whatever it might come up. But uh, it's about catching that too and just seeing that for what it is. This is part of an inner dialogue that occurs for me from time to time but when I catch it and when I can redirect it into another thought pattern, another thought process, then I can shift it to 
create a different dialogue and a different story and a new narrative for me to believe in. And so it's just simply to becoming aware of the inner dialogue and asking yourself, does that really feel true for me? And when I say, does it feel true for you? Does it feel expansive and open and loving and joyful and connected? Because that's really what truth feels like. Or does it feel constricted and heavy and uncomfortable and like, it feels like this, like, oh my gosh. And, and that doesn't feel like truth. So it's redirecting and finding something that feels more true. And often for women, it's around weight. Um, often too, in my experience, in the way I work with women, it's around pelvic health and feminine body and our, um, our connection to this space. But I uh, was discussing with um, a client earlier this week um, and we were talking about weight and how the heaviness of weight and how we have to lose the weight and it's the struggle to lose the weight and it is uncomfortable to have the weight and when we talk around the weight and it's an energetic weight as well as a physical weight and what i really believe is that uh the it's the energetic weight that's holding us down more so than the physical weight and it's the access point Perhaps if you've tried the diets and you've tried the exercise and you've done the restriction and you've done the calorie counting and you've done your head in by trying to lose this weight, what's, the, what's a new avenue? Maybe it's more mindset related and energy related. And so rather than it's flipping the mindset, how can we flip that? We're talking about weight. Let's flip it to finding the lightness. Like I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm feeling light. What feels light in my body? Where do I already feel light in myself and in my body? Where do I already feel light in my life? What am I doing when I feel light and joyous and happy and you know all the things that are um, associated with feeling light for you? What are you doing? Where are you spending your time? Who are you with? What does it feel like in your body? access more of that and how do we and it's just asking yourself where is it where is it already accessible where can i already find it who am i with and i'm going to move towards that rather than the weight the heaviness the struggle and the things that feel like much just pulling you down 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 and like the weight of it um and so fi finding the feeling catching the mind and then flipping the, the viewpoint or the perspective and really knowing that um, we are chasing the, a feeling, the sense and the sensation in our body rather than uh, thinking that when we look a particular way, then, then we will feel good. It's actually if we feel good, then we feel good. And I do, from my own experience in my own body, the more we feel good from the inside, then the more we can see ourselves reflecting that back, like literally in the mirror, of our appearance, okay? Um, and I do sense it's really that law of attraction as well. You know, what you focus on is what you bring more of into your life. And when you're feeling good from the inside, we are able to more so then make choices that are reflective of feeling good. So better nourishing foods, better, um, you know, nourishing movement and exercise, better internal dialogue and better mental health. And so all of those things come from an internal way of being rather than another diet pill or a, I don't know, a different hairstyle or, um, whatever it might be that we think is the fix to making us feel good. So there's the aesthetic component. And then there's the, uh, the, the, the connection I'm going to say 
to the body and how it functions and its resilience and its capacity, capability, and its continuous evolution and transitioning that we go through, and how do we relate to our body as a whole, and how do we view and see our body. And so in the way that I work with women, it's often this connection to our feminine body and our feminine selves, and what we see a woman's body should look like, be like, and function like. And the societal messages and the cultural messages we have around the woman's body. And some of them we've already talked through in some of these workshops. Um, but it's, a, it's around how do we view and see our body and our feminine body. So, for example, the menstrual cycle... Uh, and if do you see that cycle as inconvenient, a bother, um, a bit gross, dirty? However, you see that cycle, or might you might see it as uh, a beautiful reflection of how we are cyclical beings, and you know our natural rhythm and our connection to nature, and our connection to the lunar cycle, and our connection to the four seasons. And I can see that in my body, like really feel it in my body and how special and beautiful that is um, or is there a relationship to you know physical changes of hair going gray or maybe a bit looser skin uh, after having um, children um, and thinking that that is wrong we've made it wrong somehow when actually it's just a normal transition phase that the human body goes through as we process through life. And I often say to women, like they say, oh, my body is not the same now that it used to be before having children. And they're sensing that it feels broken and that it's wrong. And I say, well, of course, though, your body's also not the same as it was when you were a 12-year-old girl or a 6-year-old or an 18-year-old. Like... Our body is meant to transition and it's meant to change um, and be a continuous evolution throughout the life cycle. And we've made that wrong and it's probably because aesthetically it looks different. Um, but we've also wronged the female body in so many ways and in so many ways that are, I can't think of the word, but... Um, like that hypocritical, um, counter counterintuitive. I'm not quite quite getting the right word, but I hope you know what I mean. Where we say, for example, oh, women need to be beautiful and sexy and and look good. But as soon as a woman dresses sexy, oh, she's too confident. She's too out there, and um, you know she puts herself out there in ways that it, you know she's asking for it or whatever uh, might be the terminology and so we wrong like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't kind of situation um, and so it's about seeing that for what it is like and just being like okay so I can't get it right according to society and these cultural values that you know the western society might put on us or whatever and I'm going to then choose to do it my way and choose for it to feel good in me because ultimately this is my life. And that is one other point that I wanted to make around, you know, th this whole body image thing, like in trying to look a particular way to feel a certain thing, only to realise if we got to the end of our life and look back, like we had this opportunity this whole time to feel good in the body that you were born in. And unless we can embrace that right now, what happens is the years just go by, five years, 10 years, 20 years, and we see women in their 60s, 70s, 80s who have still not been able to feel the joy of what it feels like to be in their body. And so we have a choice right now. We can either choose to feel good in the body that we're in, or we can choose to let the years just continuously go by and us trying to fix something by and change something and think that it's wrong 
or we can see it as my body is transitioning across the phases of the life cycle and it cannot be wrong. And this really all comes back to, for me, how do you see your body and what is your body to you and what does it represent to you? And so I know for myself, I used to um, uh, feel like the functionality of what my body could do was quite important. And that almost gave me like what defined me or what gave me value, not to other people, but to myself. And so if I could continuously be improving my you know, strength and condition and whatever, um, that, that gave me this like, I'm increasing in value. Um, and then when you say it, you think, gee, that's weird it's like to think that. But anyhow, these are the stories that go on in our head, right? Um, and so I had this very functional view. Some women have a very aesthetic view, they say, and they say, you know, um, I've always got by on my looks. I've always really had to, um, you know, put effort into how I look um, because that's how I've made, become who I am in the world that I'm in. Uh, and, you know, some women even say, like, I, I had to, um, you know, be, become or act less intelligent than what I actually am because I, I felt like people were more attracted to my beauty and my like, physical appearance rather than my the beauty of my mind and the beauty of my being and the beauty of who I am. And so what we uh, um, how we see our body um, is going to be unique to how we experience our body. But it's often, it's like when we sit and think about, like, what does my body mean to me? What does your body mean to you? And when I really reflected on that, what I sensed my body was is that I see my body more like a soulmate. Like, it's my friend who, before I came into this world, you know, as you're a soul, like, it was the peace that allowed me to experience and be in a physical world. It's my physical body that allowed that. And it's been here with me from the, the you know, the moment of conception. And it's been the, the one thing that's always there with me and my reliable companion. And, like, because I have an understanding of... Um, you know, physiology, and which everybody does um, to their own degree. Um, but I know that my body innately is working towards this level of balance, this homeostasis that it's, it's happening within. Um, and so on a cellular level, my body has my back and it's trying always to find balance and health and nourishment. And when I can listen to that, and use its cues, you know, the actual physical cues. You know, it might be looking at the colour of your urine or taking notice of your bowel motions or just noticing how you feel when you've had four hours sleep versus eight hours sleep, those sorts of things. Listening to your body's cues, it's working alongside you, but we somehow wrong it. Be like, oh, gosh, my body's, you know, can't, they can't do it on this amount of sleep and I don't feel good. It's because your body is asking you for more rest and that doesn't mean we can always give it more rest. You know, maybe you've been up with a sick child or breastfeeding all night or whatever, but it's that's its invitation to say, hey, let's go steady today. Let's have a down day. Let's relax a little bit more. Same with periods. Periods become uncomfortable or painful. Um, that's your body's invitation as well to, to take it a little bit steady to relax a little bit, to slow down, offer it some your yourself and your being some nourishment. And that doesn't mean that you accept pain as normal. It means that there is, you know, there's this level of body's response that's telling me what it needs and what 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 it would take for us, you know, mind, body, soul, spirit, the whole of us to feel good, to feel nourished, to feel well, you know, whatever it is that feels, you know, um, like resonant to you. Uh, and so it's taking a look, like what does your body represent to you? What does it mean to you? Uh, 
and perhaps where are you wronging your body rather than seeing and listening to its cues and the other is where are you trying to find a feeling by fixing or changing something about you when actually that feeling is very well accessible right now but it's more of a, a mindset shift and a perspective shift but also a more body presence shift and so when we can shift more into body presence we get, begin to feel more of how we actually want to feel and realize that we don't need to chase the feeling through fixing and so I'm going to wrap it up with those sort of con concepts ideas this is a really like you know shifting body image shifting our relationship with our body um, and becoming more in relationship with our body is is a practice it's continuing practice um, and so I offer you to give yourself time to give yourself space to feel supported in your practice of becoming more connected to yourself and becoming really curious around your um, your body and it's um, the workings of your inner world uh, and and be gentle and be really kind with yourself and offer yourself that compassion and kindness and gentleness that you would with your best friend. Remember that I am here for this following week from when you receive this to be here for your support, uh, to answer any questions that might, you might have or to excuse me, listen, and for you to share your experience. There's so much clarity that comes out of us sharing our experiences and just giving a little bit of voice. Um, and that part, that is part of how we process um, and practice, practice and process, uh, becoming more curious about our own selves and our body uh, and yeah. Again, thank you so much. I am really happy that um, you've been able to um, join this experience with me. Um, so in about a week, again, I'll send out something into your inbox. Um, I don't even know what it is um, <laughs> right now as I say it, but I know that there'll, there'll be a way that I just want to wrap up and connect um, with you for one last time after we've had this experience together. All right, thank you. See ya.